contribution and just uh, want to acknowledge that, yes, part three is actually the most controversial part of the, um, of the bill that we're discussing today. And, um, and it has, uh, it, it, the most controversial part is for the very reason that the member has just been articulating. And that is around the recognition of the legality of an email being sent um, or a notice being sent by email and what that means at the receiver's end. So there has been concerns raised by some uh, by members on the select committee um, to make sure that while the while the government department uh, can prove that and must prove that the email address that they were using is a working email address, um, so that it was addressed correctly, uh, that that really only um, it only stands as a proof that it was correctly sent. Uh, for example, and I used this example um, for some colleagues of mine, if, for, if, if I receive, say, 300 emails a day and I didn't manage to get to that email on that day, just the fact that it was correctly sent doesn't mean that downstream I can't say, well, actually, I either didn't open it on that day, there must be some downstream proof of that. Um, I have the opportunity to say, well, it might have been my working email last week, but it's not my working email this week. So there are some defences. There are some defences around um, the recognition that notices uh, do, uh, are or are not received. But I think what or the other part of this that actually caused concern was the same applies to couriers. And, um, you know, with all due respect to courier companies, uh, we all know how unreliable some courier companies can be. However, to send a notice by courier, as long as the department shows that it was to um, an accurate address, it was addressed appropriately um, and correctly, then they can say, we did send it. So therefore, we met our obligation to send to a, an acknowledged address. If, however, it doesn't reach that address because uh, the courier company lost the notification, that is a defence against any downstream consequence of perhaps not taking action on that, um, on that notice. Just one other thing, though. The supplementary order paper that is on the table also amends part three just slightly. It, it, um, it's the second amendment. It's minor and technical in its drafting, and it updates just the numbering of the inserted provisions in light of other amendments that have been made in that part three. Uh, the first part of that supplementary order paper, which has already been discussed here, set, allows the chief executive to set the parameters by which a photo will be made. So I did just want to rise and acknowledge the um, controversy of part three, that um, there, there is a tension there um, that will be tested, I believe, going forward. But it is something that needed to be updated, the language, the, the, the method by which government departments, and, it, and for, if for no other reason than actually there is a financial saving for the taxpayer, uh, but that we mustn't lose that tension about just because you send something, is there um, a way that a, um, a recipient can make can, can prove that actually I didn't receive it? There are reasons why I didn't receive it. So, um, so somewhere in the middle, somewhere in the middle, it got lost. But I acknowledge the member and the controversy, and I, I acknowledge the interest from the opposition benches on this particular issue because I know how concerned they are with regard to the tension that is in this uh, in this document. I know how and um, sort of. How, how excited they are to have this piece of legislation in the House, and, and I look forward to their contributions as we go forward. Uh, I call uh, Jamie Lee Ross. I move that the question be now put. Uh, I call the Honourable Grant Roberts. Very much, Madam Chair. And I'm, I'm quite surprised to see um, uh, members opposite.